going live. Hey y'all, I am James Wright and welcome to my shop. Tonight we are doing houndstooth dovetails. Uh, in other words, fancy dovetails. Um, <laughs> they're, they are uh, a surprisingly easy dovetail to make. Uh, however, they kind of scare some people. So I'm gonna go through some of the, uh, the scary parts of it and try and make them a little bit simpler because there are ways that you can do them to make them simpler and there are ways that um, are they're more difficult. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we're gonna have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, things coming up, actually I don't know if we have anything on the calendar right now. Um, there, well, there is an MWTCA meet coming up. Um, I wanna say it's the 12th of November. Um, it's a little south of Springfield, Illinois. I'm not gonna be able to make that one, which is kind of sad. Um, but uh, for those of you who are in Illinois, look up the MWTCA and uh, one of those will be coming up here soon. Um, but other than that, I think we can uh, dive into this. So what exactly is a houndstooth do dovetail? It is basically a dovetail, uh, except for rather than all the dovetails being the same length, uh, there are tails that stick inside of the tails, uh, or actually pins that stick inside. And so you're actually making two tails into one big tail. Um, and most of the time they're done with dissimilar sizes. This is one I did in a live a long time ago where I made them um, from the same piece. But most of the time they are done with um, two different thickness boards and one of them will then dovetail into the other. So you would put your tails in the thinner stock and your teeth in the thicker stock. Um, you would commonly see this on the end of a bench. Um, so you have the, the jaw coming out and then the last piece dovetails into it. Um, is there any particular bonus to doing hound's tooth dovetails? No, they add no extra structural integrity. Um, maybe a little bit more in that you would have, uh, if you have a thick board you're going into, having the tail that doesn't go all the way into the board means you have a gluing surface a little farther into it, but it is so slight that in any practical reality there isn't a structural benefit to it. But there is an appearance benefit to it, and it is one of those things that looks looks gorgeous and happy, and reminds me of my wife. Um, so <laughs> tonight we're going to do this. Um, now, if you've done hand cut dovetails before, it's basically the exact same thing, and it's one of those things where you look at it and you go, "Wow, that's complicated. How am I going to do that?" Uh, until you actually do them in the reality, and then you realize, "Okay, this is really not complicated. I don't know what I was thinking." Um, so, yeah. Um, also, um, I am going to be doing them as through dovetails, um, which just makes it a little bit easier. Um, I do have whole videos on how to make um, half-blind dovetails. Uh, maybe I'll do another live here soon doing a half-blind dovetails. If you want to see that, let me know. Um, but uh, through dovetails just makes it a little easier to explain rather than mixing in another step. Um, if you distill things down to their basics, it makes them a little bit simpler. So what we need to do is we need to cut, do we need to cut tails in the thin stock and then we're going to transfer those into pins in the larger stock. And uh, feel free to slam the brakes and say, hey, uh, I've got to do questions if there's something. Did you up. just say? What? Oh, maybe they're catching up to something. It was... So, um, oh shoot, before I do this, <laughs> first thing we need to do is we need to make our stop marks on this board. And so I'm gonna use my marking gauge here and I am going to then mark whoop, the thickness of this down to here. And that will allow me which one is it? It's that one. I can tighten this up on here. And so now I have this marking gauge set up to this thickness. And that is going to be the depth of this cut. So I'm going to use this to come across and mark in that deep. And that is really, really deep. I'm going to do this on all four sides because I'm going to be cutting off the, uh, the extra tails, I'm gonna have a half pin rather than a half tail. Most of the time you have a half pin, but not always. Sometimes I like to do a half tail for um, some uses. So that's how far down I need to cut down to that line, if you can see that there. Now for laying out dovetails, usually I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna mark them out. But in this case, I'm missing my little square. Well, I guess we use the big square. Oh, I'll use this one. Um, in this case, I'm going to lay them out with um, these pointy thingies. Um, why? Because eh, sometimes I like to do things a little differently. And I found that I, I tend to, I don't know, I try to show the precise ways in the videos sometime because most of the time I like to show the quick and easy way. Um, and for actually stepping out dovetails, I'm going to put these on here. 
and I'm going to start with one of them on here, and I want to make two tails. I'm going to make one big tail here, a really small pin, one big tail on the other side. So I want to this to go on past halfway. Um, no, no, excuse me. I want it to be just shy of halfway, uh, something around there. And so if I put a small dimple there, and then I walk this over that way, and then I start from the other side, and I can see that in this case, I'm going to have a very small tail, small tail, big, um, big pin. So I want more in there. So I've got two dimples here, and I want to get those closer together. I want to have about an eighth inch apart. So I'm going to spread this out a little farther. Let's go out to here. And now I'm actually going to move it down to this side so I can tell those dimples apart. Put that pin in, flip it around. That's looking a little better. And then we're going to start back from this side over here. Yeah, those are a little more than an eighth inch apart, which is about what I want. So that's going to give me two tails there. Let me, oop, where'd it go? Put my square on here. I'm going to put my knife into that dimple mark, put the square up against it. Oop, go light. I'm just trying to go heavy there. I don't want to go heavy. Light, medium, hard. Come over to this one, make sure I get the right hole, put it in the dimple. Light, medium, hard, put it in the dimple, light, Oop. slid a little bit. And then I'm going to come over for this last one, flipping around because the camera's in my way, and it's a lot harder to do from the other side. Light, medium, hard. Okay, now I could come in here and I could lay out the, um, the hound's tooth as well. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to cut these separately so I can see them, and then it'll be easier to come back in and mark out the hound's tooth. Uh, for the cut, I'm going to grab my dovetail saw, and I could come in with uh, um, guides to mark those out. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start here, and I'm going to put one pass right across the top just to establish it on the outside of those, outsides of those lines. At this point, it really doesn't matter if I'm on the outside or the inside because I haven't marked out my pins yet. Just sharpened this one a little while ago, so it's kind of aggressive. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put my saw in, and I'm going to back this up just a little bit so you can see a little bit better here. Is it vigorous? Yes, very, very <laughs> vigorous. And now I'm going to take this from 90 degrees. I'm going to angle it to something that looks about right. And because I'm using big tails, I don't need a very I don't need a very large angle. Just a little angle will do fine. Down to depth. I'm going to come over, skip a line to the next one. That way I'm keeping that same angle. Is that your Jared Green saw? What's that? Is that your Jared Green? No, this one is uh, from uh, Bearcat Woodworks. Bearcat, okay. Um, which he stopped making saws, which is sad, but it sounds like he might be making them again sometime. Small batch special order, we'll see. See what I got this way. Down an inch and a half. Big cuts. I have a question if you're ready for one. What's that? Um, Cosman wants to know, are dovetails made with jigs, such as Cat Moses Veritas, etc., still legitimately hand cut? Oh, someone wants to start an argument. Um, yes, of course they are. If you're using a handsaw, they're hand cut. Um, honestly, the dovetailed Moses, the Cat's Moses jig is one of my favorites because you're still using it. It's kind of like training wheels. It holds it in place and you start to learn what is the body mechanic and it will correct for a little bit. You can still skew the saw off of this. If you're really going bad, this won't fix bad. Um, but this will give you that slight guidance to give you that accurate cut. And it's a great way to get going. And in many times when you just want to speed and you want to go and you want them all to be the exact same, this is phenomenal. Um, I kind of view it like training wheels. They, they're fantastic to learn on or if you just want to do it. Uh, but you don't always want people to see you using training wheels. So. Uh. I thought you just said train wheels in that yes, training. Yes, train wheels. And I was like, 
you're doing the locomotion. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now let's put in the hound's tooths. And why are they called hound's tooths? Teeth, hound, 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 tooth, hound. The plurals Because you give teeth. blood so the hound can find <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why, actually, but uh, it would be kind of fun to figure out. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm actually going to put it on the edge of the tail here. And what I want is a pin in the middle. Um, actually, we're, we're creating a new um, tooth here. Um, so it's going to be reversed. So in this case, we're basically making a pin here. It'll be fatter at the bottom. Um, and I want to make those center. So I'm going to start here, and I want to go just a little past center. Let's see how that looks. And then I'll start at the opposite side of that same tooth. And that's still a bit fat. I've got about a eh, quarter inch in between those. So I'm going to come back over here. Make it just a little smaller, not quite that much. About there. Start back at this side. There, those are about an eighth inch apart. I like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on this tooth here. There. And there. So there's my marks that way. Now I can come in with this and do the exact same thing we did before. Put it into the line. Get in front of the camera. I'm going to try and get around the camera here. Light. Oop, slid. Don't slide. That's what happens when I try and go fast. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, this one. Light, medium, hard. Over to the last set. Make sure it's coming around this way. Any questions right now? Uh, not really. Medium. Okay, there. Now I need to figure out how far down do I want to make these to come. And since I've used this up, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say I need it to be somewhat less. And I'm going to make them something around that thickness. Um, doesn't really matter. There's no right or wrong reason. And then I'm going to put marks in here near the bottom of where that's going to be. There. And there. And there. And this just gives me a stop cut so that they all come down the right amount. Uh, the, the, they come down the same amount. Do they have to come down the same amount? No. Um, just uh, looks good when they all match. So we're going to do the exact same thing here. And I'm just going to start with a pass right across the, stop, the top to establish it. And in this case, you get to have a little bit of artistry. Um, do you want these to have the exact same angle? as the bigger counterpart? Or do you want them to have a more exaggerated angle so that they kind of match together? And I kind of like to having these a little bit more exaggerated. So that's about the same angle, and I'm going to tilt it just a little farther away. Not by much, just a little bit. I'll show you those in a moment. In. Three. And then this one. Make those match. So, question, this is my question for you. What's that? You're not marking X's on not any yet, of these yet? Not yet. I'm not cutting out the okay. Let's see, those look pretty good. Very good. Now that I have all of this marked out, I need to remove the waste in between. And that's when I'm going to come in here with a chisel. I'm going to go this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Those all need to go because we don't like them. I'm going to take this, rotate it 90 degrees, and that will allow us to cut down this face here. Do the exact same thing we did before. And with small teeth, even with a rip saw like this, it still works out fine. So right into that line. Then I'm going to grab a uh, half inch chisel and I'm going to come in here and detail these out because I want to get those right on that line. It was a little bit off my line, not by much, but by a little bit. This one's a little on the dull side. It's okay, we're working in oak. If we're working in something like pine, I would stop and go sharpen it. Because in pine, if it's dull, you just end up crushing it. Whereas, and that's not a good crushing it, that's the bad crushing it. 
So my son would say, yeah, I want to crush it. Just coming out of the file to do a little bit of cleanup on here. Make those tips look good. Then we're gonna rotate it 180 degrees and do the same thing on the other side. Clean up this face over Why here. Why is your hand all yellow? Oh, I was doing the, um, um, what's that called? No it's uh, uh, the <sighs> squash soup. Oh, the butternut, butternut soup. Yes. Butternut stained my hands. I was making soup for my wife. He does love me. Start with the Okay, which camera cross. are you wanting to I'm on the big one right now. Okay. I'm showing my body. There we go. Now we can come to the chisel. Do the same thing again on this side. Clean back to that line. Should probably stop and sharpen this, but nah. I'm only gonna use that for a minute. I'll use the, the smaller one a little bit later. That's usually the way of it, isn't it? Oh, I don't need to sharpen right now. Did that right, you say every line? <laughs> um, I need to cut out all those bits in between. Now, because I'm doing really thin and narrow pins, that means it's gonna be a little more difficult here because I, I, I could come under the chisel, but anytime you're doing narrow pins, coming under the chisel and chiseling them out is actually a bit tricky. Um, so in this case, it's one of the rare times where I'm going to go grab a turning saw or a coping saw, and we are going to cope them out. Yeah, sometimes life just really gets you down and you just, you have to cope with it. Is this your coping mechanism? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of these days, I'm going to make a, a proper turning device rather than uh, using my Allen wrench on here. But it works, so I haven't had a chance yet to turn it. Or I haven't had a necessity to change it yet. Slide it down in the groove. A little bit ahead. Let me slide this over here, show you this angle. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to turn it when it's not cutting. So I have it currently set up to cut on the push stroke. And so I'm gonna, when I push, I'm going to turn. And when I pull, I'm going to leave it alone. So push, 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 push. Ooh, I got a little too close to that one. Oof. Well, that line's eating in. Why are you diving? Oh, my, my blade is bending big time. All right. Ooh, heated up. Now I'm having problems. Okay, let's back up and do this one from the other side then. Because my blade is twisting. And I don't want it to. There, that's better. Now let's come down to this one. A little bit. One more. Oops. One big one. <laughs> nope, don't turn to the wrong one. Um, so they want to know, are you cutting on the push or the pull with that Push. Stop? Push stroke. Here, we've gotten out most of the waste, except for now we need to come back in and chisel it right down to that line. Make them nice and clean. We've got a good bit of junk left in on each of these. So I need to take them right back to the line. So for that, I'm going to grab out the hold fast and put it into the hole. And let's go ahead and put it right here. Grab the uh, soft two-faced mallet. Boomchi boomchi. And now I'm going to grab my little chisel. And Say hello to, to my line. little chisel. Yes. Hello <laughs> to my little chisel. So let's bring this in and show you what we got here. I'm going to try and stay away from the lines as long as I can. I'm going to use a small carving mallet, which is out of focus. Stay away from the line. I'm back about a sixteenth inch or so. I'm going to cut down about halfway. And in this case, I'm going to see if I can split that difference. No, I'm not going to. So I'm going to put that right into the line now. Go down about halfway. Then let's come over to this one. Same thing here. Do 
let's go right into that line. And then back to this one, same thing here. Most of the time, I just prefer to chop them out because you still have to come over here and chop uh, rather than using the coping saw. But um, when they're little like this, chopping all the way down is a little more difficult. When they're bigger, it's easier. If I can get my, if I can get my half inch chisel in there, I do that. And now, let's loosen up this, flip them over. Make sure you get rid of all that dust because you don't want to clamp this down onto a surface that has junk on it. Back up, relock it down. And now, let's do the same thing from the other side. Any questions, Jen? Um, no questions from the peanut gallery? Well, there was a question about one of your rasps. Hang on. Okay. I gotta find it. And when in oh, doubt... it was a file. I'm sorry. They want to know what kind of file you were using. Uh, it's a small half round. I'll give you a close-up profile of it in a moment here. When in doubt, undercut a little bit. Uh, here I'll show you. The file I'm using is a very, very fine file. Flat on this side, half round on this side. But that gives me a very fine edge that allows me to get up into corners. Um, so I like to use this for surfaces. And that fine file gives you a really nice clean surface on there. Company on that one is, uh, it's an old Nicholson. An XF number one. That one I got an old garage sale in a bucket of a whole bunch of files. There's probably one or two that I kept out of that bucket. It's a little on the dull side because it was in a bucket of files. They all rub against each other. And this one that I really messed up. There we go. So now we've gotten rid of most of this. I'm just going to come in here, this, and clean out any junk that's piling up. That looks about right. Now we'll loosen this up and do some detail cleaning on this before we go much farther. For the detail cleaning, I'm going to use that same file again because I can get in here and I can clean out those side flutes. Here, I'll show you DOS. There we go. And this will allow me to get in here and clean up these sidewalls where most of the junk is at. And it's really nice and fine, so I'm not worrying about garring anything up. I'm just getting rid of any burrs and fluff that might be on the walls. And I do want to get something down in there. So I'm going to grab a small, small triangle file. Do, 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 do I have a small, small? I know I've got to have one little one like that, don't I? Yeah, duh, of course. All my triangle files are uh, saw sharpening files. Dirty, dirty, dirty. So, small triangle saw sharpening file. And that'll let me do the bottoms of these gullets. Do you know what that shape reminds me of? What's that? Like little wo wood gnomes like stuck in the wood and their legs are sticking out and they're kicking. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Just telling you. So, now we need to transfer those marks onto the end of this board. So for that we're going to do basically the exact same thing we would normally do for dovetails. And knock my camera around while I spin this. I put this in here. I'm going to grab a block plane. Block plane I'm going to put on the bench. And this will allow me to set it at the exact same height, making this just a little bit easier to do. So I've got that in here. This is flush across there. Lock it down. Check it one more time. Get the hold fast out of there. I can slide this back, and now I can put this on here and get it right up to the same spot. Now, one of the fun things. I like to do is put this on here with this fence not below this surface but actually half on and half off or a little bit above. And what that'll allow me to do is it will make sure that this board is square to this face and that these tails both touch the end of this. And once I get it locked in, then I'll put pressure down here and be very, very careful at this point that I don't slide it just like that. 
I really wanted to, I could put a hold fast on here and lock it in with that. With some weight on there, I'm going to come in with this knife, use it to register on there. Again, light, medium, hard. And it's very important to do the light pass on here. I'm going to do all of them on one side of the teeth first. The tooth, hound's tooth. Then flip it over and do the other side of the tooth. Or is it a tail? Hound's tooth? Or is it a hound's dovetail? There's got to be a really cool animal involved with that. A dovetail with hound's teeth. No, it meant the dog bit it. Okay. And then before I go any farther, I still have this marking gauge set up with that same depth. And that's going to tell me this is the depth of those hound's tooth. Just like that. So, I want to make sure all my lines are fully readable. And with that in place, I'm going to come in with this and I'll mark out this area and this area. Now, I have to be very careful because inside those areas are areas that I want to keep, but those blocked out areas are areas that I want to um, get rid of. So, I'm going to do something like this and this and make it very obvious that I want to cut on the side with the marking. <laughs> Because, yeah, you're going to run into problems that way. Next thing I need to do is I need to have a mark how far down the surface do we need to cut. And so now that I, the, it's one of the reasons why I didn't normally I mark that beforehand, but I wanted to keep this set up with those same marks that I used for marking the depth of this. So now I can loosen this up. I can set it on, oops, move you over. I can set it on here and I can take the measurement of how thick is this board. I guess I could have made the depth of the teeth the same as the thickness of this board and just used the same marking for both, but I wouldn't have a good teaching moment then. <laughs> so now we've got that depth on here. I can mark on this board, and I just need to mark on the two faces of it, which it just looks kind of weird because I'm only cutting in that far on this board. Just like that. A little piece chipped off. Oh, well using a scrap of uh, countertop, which has uh, um, pieces, uh, what's wrong for? Things on there. <laughs> Brain farts. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here, and now I want to transfer those lines down. I don't have to do this, but I like having a little bit of something here that is visual. visual. <coughs> it makes it a little easier to keep the saws on track. And then come around this side. I don't know why I like to cut the down line on this because it's more important that this be 90 degrees than the tails being at a specific angle. Then with that in place, I'm going to come in here and make sure I'm on the correct side of the line. Cut in a slot all the way across. And I'm just going to go through and establish these. work from one side to the other. How are we doing on time? 27. Oh, we're not bad. I was thinking we're like 35 or so. Whenever I try and do a whole joint in one hour and do the whole talk through, I always feel like, ooh, I've got to rush. And then I get problems and things never work out the way I want them to and I'm unhappy. And for those of you who don't want, who want to know, this is a hard maple. Uh, the uh, tails were put in white oak. Uh, why I'm using hard maple? Because I had a scrap that was sitting along. It worked well. And hard maple is actually a pretty easy one to do because it cuts nicely, it cuts cleanly. It'll dull tools a little faster, but that's fine. Actually, oops, I broke a cart. Wait. Um, yeah, this is my outside. This is my show face over here. And so normally I want to have my show face the side I'm going to be cutting. And I didn't think about that ahead of time, which I should have. And the reason I do that is because if the back side is off of 90 degrees a little bit, then eh, oh well. But if this side is off 90 degrees, you're going to be seeing gaps. Um, so normally I make sure that I'm cutting on the show side. 
but in this case, I forgot. So I'm going to come through and mark off from this side. That one's already cut. And hey, look at that. I've got established marks already. Look at that. Um, i got to remember that side. Okay, cool. Down to cut. Down to cut, and one more. Down to cut. Now, now I need to cut out these hound's tooths. Hound's tooths. And so I'm going to do basically the exact same thing, except for only the front half really matters. So I'm going to put these down strokes right on the inside of it. And I'm hoping you guys can see this. Let me see if I can get in a little closer here and let you guys see a little bit better. Something that's out of focus. There we go. Let me grab a pencil. So, where's my pencil? There, my pencil. I've got one leg of the hound's tooth here, one leg of the hound's tooth here, depth there, depth there, like that. And so now I need to create these down lines here. So I'm hoping you guys can see that. It's always hard to find out what can actually be seen on camera and what can't. Down stroke, down stroke. And the, the idea is that this almost feels like it should be a half blind because they don't go all the way through. But there's no reason you can't saw all the way through because we're getting rid of this chunk in the back. I just need it to be really close right here. So I'm going to start here, get really close to my line, and follow that back, and then I'm going to cut down here. I'm going to cut past a good ways, that's not a problem at all. But again, the show surface is what matters. Cut down to depth here. There's one. Just a quiet chat tonight. Uh, no one's talking about coffee tonight? Eh, it's a little cheesy tonight, but. <laughs> One of my other favorite comments. Could get out walnut and start working with that because then everyone gets hungry thinking it's chocolate. Oh, I fell into a vat of chocolate. How do you confuse walnut and chocolate? Oh, it looks like, it, it look, when you start curling it off, it looks like curls of chocolate. It, oh. it really does. It's kind of like, whoa, it makes you really hungry. <laughs> Whenever I work on it here, I have to be careful what time I do with Luke. I either do it right before lunch or right after lunch. Otherwise, we both get like, I'm really hungry. <laughs> Oop, block down, block down. Okay, now, at this point, um, I've got all of these lines cutting across there. And so I could come in with the, uh, um, with the, uh, the uh, coping saw, uh, but having this an inch and a half thick maple it's going to take a lot to cut those. And in this case, it's going to be much, much faster to chisel them out. And I've got a lot of waste I can remove. Um, but I also need to mark which waste I need to remove. And it's going to be a little different because on this one, I've got to remove, uh, let's see, where is this? Yeah, this one. So I need to remove this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece. But on the back, I need to remove this piece and this piece and this piece. Not that one. This piece and this piece and this piece. So I've got to be a little careful there. Um, but it will make it much easier. On this side, I can chop down a long ways. 
um, before I need to do it. And what I want to do is I want to save this little tail over here, this little pin uh, coming out. So I'm going to start by chopping down this way and see how much I can get out this way. Then I can flip it over and chop in from the other side. So uh, hold fast, hold fast, hold, and thump and whacker. Then I'm going to come in with, uh, I'm going to use my three quarter inch chisel for most of this because it's a little larger. And since it's a little larger, I'm going to use a little larger mallet. Yes, I've had one, two, three, four different mallets so far in this one little project. You can never have enough mallets. Bring this up, back out a little bit. Is that because they knock sense into you? Hmm. Oh, come on, focus. My cable's having issues. There it goes. <laughs> I should spend oh. another five or six thousand dollars and get something better, right? <laughs> and so we're staying a little more than a sixteenth away from the line. Ah! Just cut through my tail. Oh, and it's on the show surface too. Oh well. <laughs> ah, I even put a mark on there. <laughs> Such is life. So now I can cut in that way, come back over here, chop out, not cut into the tail there, stay away from that. At least I cut before doing this. This one's good and sharp. You can see how it's blowing through that hard maple. And then, I'm coming in at an angle rather than popping it out from the end because I want to save this material that makes it a little bit easier to chop from the other side so I'm not blowing things out. I'm going to do that as far as I can, but having something thick like this, it's not going to be quite as easy as I'd want it to be. But it's going to be a lot of the same. Chop in, pair out, chop in, pair out. Actually, I don't think I'm going to be able to save this because that's where that seam is in this piece. Yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and blow that out. Oh well, so we'll come in here make it a little easier. Just means I'm gonna have to be very careful on the other side. If it were solid wood, there wouldn't be as much of a problem with that though. But that does make it easier for popping those pieces out. And I'd like to be able to cut down to that line. Well, what was the phrase we learned at swing dance lessons this weekend? What's that? In perfect practice. Yes. Makes progress. Makes progress. <laughs> yeah, so often people really get worked up about not being perfect. And I mean, there is something that, you know, practice makes permanent, um, but doesn't make perfect. And that's okay. No one says you have to be perfect. You'll never ever be perfect. It's, it's a direction to strive but it's not a location you'll ever get to. It does make progress though. So I'm getting close to that line. I'll switch the camera here in a moment. Okay, I'm a little ways away from the depth of that hound's tooth. We go down to about there. I'll put this right into that hound's tooth line. And chop it back. And this one doesn't matter as much. There we go. So now we're down to depth at this point here. Let's do the same thing over on this one. Hmm. 
Okay, so we're still staying away from that line, but now that I've got it most of the way out, I'm going to come back and get a little closer to that line. Just eyeballing vertical. And if you undercut it a little bit, that's not a problem. Undercutting makes it a little easier to put together. And now we're going to go right into that line. Establish the cut. I think this one. Yeah, I'm going to need to cut this back in. I left, left it out a little bit. And then onto this one. Right into that line. And over to this one. Right into the line. Okay. So, we've got this far done. We can flip it over and do the other side. Where's that mallet? There it is. And at this point, I need to be careful because now. Uh, on, on this section so far, I did the whole thing across. Now I need to do every other segment, and I just need to switch that mindset um, and be careful. And also, there's nothing protecting the other side of this, so I need to be very, very careful not to blow out this pin. Famous last words. Let's see if we can actually make it happen. So I have a question before you start banging. Uh, what is that? David Overholzer wants to know, is that Holdfast uh, Black Bear Forge? Hold yes, fast. Black Bear Forge. Good eye. And before I do that, I'm going to sharpen this one up just a little bit. My 3 8 is not quite where I want it to be. And so for sharpening, I'm going to use a little window cleaner. And start with the coarse, medium, fine, strop. Or make sure I got that. A little bit on the back. And then I'm going to wipe off the window cleaner. Go straight here under the strop. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Flip it over on the flat. One, back and forth. Tip, back, tip, back. There we go. Now we are very, very good and sharp. So we're going to bring it over to this. Same thing as before. Keep away from that line. Make sure you're only chiseling where you want to be chiseling. I'm going to use a softer mallet now, or a lighter mallet, uh, because I don't want to be bashing this apart anymore. because I don't want to be breaking these off. I'm going to go a little bit softer. Staying about a sixteenth inch or less away from the line. And then come in from the end and pop out those pieces. Don't chop into the pin. <laughs> then rinse and repeat. And as I get closer to popping through, I might want to take it a little lighter so I don't blow out anything in the middle. But not blowing out in the middle is just something that makes me happy. It won't make the dovetails better. It just pleases me. Is that a super chat? It is a super chat. What does the super chat ask of us? Eric Cantrell says, always enjoy watching. Well, thank, thank you, you, Eric. Man. All right. A lot. You ready? You're adding to Sarah's Coca Fund. Yes. Or I guess we now have a coffee fund. The coffee fund does not need to be funded anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What's the mom joke? You do not need any more jokes. What is the most expensive cheese hotel? The most expensive cheese hotel? Mm -hmm. What? The Stilton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, babe. Ah. 
It's the one time it can be cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> I think I'll just stay neutral on this one. <laughs> Go a little Swiss on you. <laughs> Were you trying to act holier okay. than thou? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to blow through because I just have a little bit left. Or maybe I won't. Yeah, I'm going to blow through. I'm just going to break those fibers off. No reason to save them. We got rid of those. Now we can come back into that line. Put it right into that line because I'm really close to it. Work down that way. Right into the line. Actually, that's thin enough. I'm come over here <laughs> and just hand cut it. Have a good sharp cut. Let's see if I can do that on this one. It's a little bit thicker. Yep, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that is a very devious laugh. <laughs> Lynx G was like, I got a joke for you, Sarah. And I goes, what's your favorite vegetable? And I said, what? And goes, after watching you guys for a while now, I'd have to guess corn. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. You got a point. I do have an ear for that kind of joke. It's very appealing. What's that? It's very appealing. Okay. I like to butter you up. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've gotten rid of most on here, I'm going to pop off the hold fast and we are going to clean this up. So put it into the vise. And I'm going to show you what it looks like inside because it ain't pretty. Um, I blew out those bits in there, which, you know, it's not a problem. It's just uh, the way it looks. Come on. Oh, I need this HDMI. Really need to get a better cable. Still not going to let me focus, is it? Mm, no. It's beautiful sawdust. There we go. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, well, now we <laughs> flipped it. Uh, where are we at? So I'm going to bring in with this one. I'm going to do these sidewalls with this. Just getting rid of any burrs or fuzzes. Now it looks like Optimus Prime. <laughs> I love you, babe. Okay, and I've got some junk in here that I can just chisel out. It's easier with the camera out of here. And then I also want to make sure that I've got a flat bottom. And then so I can do that by putting the chisel on here. I'll rest it on the far corner and then I'll lay it down until it touches the other corner. So it should be able to touch both corners at the same time on each of these spaces. And it does. So this side I cut square. This side I actually undercut a little ways. And that is fine. Is that on the Super Chat? It is. Alan Lewis just throwing money at us. What does Alan have to say? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, I don't know if you can do that. you got to say something. Well, oh, in the chat, Alan then said thanks for all the great info. <laughs> Are you ready? What we got? I think you'll get this one. What dance does cheese do on Halloween? The Munster Mash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, now for the moment of truth. Um, gotta remember which side I put out. But let's find out. Does this fit? Um, yeah, we'll find out here. So, is it this way? Looks to be that way. Just flip it over and make sure. It actually looks both. Good. Actually, it's slightly better this way, so let's do it that way. <laughs> and this one, one. I'm getting it. It's pivoting down here, so this edge is is sliding in nicely. The top edge, though, 
I mean, right on the top edge is sliding in, but in between it's not. So one of the tricks I'm going to do is I'm just going to like give this a light tap, and I'm going to put it down eh, an eighth inch or so, and then I'm going to pull this out. And what that's going to do is it's going to show me where I'm rubbing. So in this one, I can see, let me see if you guys can see that. I'll bring it over here. Right over here, we've got these little bits that are rubbing off here. I've got a little bit that's rubbing off here. And a little bit on that one there. That lets me know this, I need to take off material on this face and this face. I need to take off material on this face here. So I'm just going to come in with the file here. And I'm just going to hit those two faces. Or those three faces. Now it looks like you're at the dentist. <laughs> I want to make sure, actually, I got a little bit on this one. Not by much. And then let's try it again. Ooh. See, I'm down about a little past an eighth inch. And it's getting tight here. Now, um, I think you actually show you a fun trick here because it's a lot of times the, the problem is finding out where is it tight, where is it loose, and being able to spot that is um, a bit tricky. But there's a few things you can do. What you want to see is you want to look for where is there movement. If there's movement, it means it's loose there. If there is no movement, that means it's tight there. And you want to row, you want to remove material from the spots that are tight, not the spots that are loose. Come on, let me focus. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a small mallet and I'm going to kind of wiggle this around. So the back here is moving a lot. Right along the back is moving a lot. And I'm moving... I'm not moving here at all. And I'm moving very easily here. So I don't need to take off any material over here. It looks like this is the one that's actually binding a good bit. So let's take it off. And I'm going to come in with a chisel on this one because I can see it's bruising it quite well. And I'm not hitting the front edge. I'm not hitting the edge I can see. In other words, this edge right here, I'm just cutting in the back and removing that junk there. You can see it's bruising over on this side too. I have a, I was gonna say, I have a joke. I have a question when you have a moment. What's that? Um, Alex Adams wants to know, is it better to clean up those dovetails slash Hound's tooth cuts with a file than a chisel because the rougher surface is better for glue? Uh, no, it depends on how much material you want to take off. If you're getting really, really close. Like right now, if I wanted to, I could hit this with a hammer and pound it down and it would probably work perfectly fine. But I want it to be a little bit more finesse because I don't want to split this out. Because that's always the fear. If you, if you have too much force on it, it could split out your pin board or your tail board, depending on how you do it. Um, and so a file allows you to really sneak up on it and be detailed with it. Whereas a chisel... <laughs> Sorry, your shirt. It's knuckle up on it. <laughs> <laughs> a chisel takes off a lot of material, so you have to be very careful with that. Uh, so let's see what we've got here. So now we've got this in. That's looking good. So that's really, really close. And I could just whack that down in. And I, hmm, mm, 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 mm. part of me says whack it down. Yeah, let's just whack it down. No, it's not going down. I'm, you got I'm seven minutes on, left. <laughs> what's that? You got seven minutes. <laughs> I'm putting pressure on here and it's not moving. So what I know now is I can get down this far, but something in that last little bit is jamming. It be jamming, it be jamming. Um, I can't believe I did that. Um, <laughs> I can. <laughs> so uh, all of the material I need to move is down underneath here. I don't need to remove any material up here. So I take this apart, loosen it out of the jaw, and I'm put it on the edge here, and I'm going to go... Like that. And then I can also look at this, and I can see where am I rubbing and where am I burnishing. I'm trying to find... I'm not seeing a spot. And you look like it though. So in this case, I mean, they're really, really close. So I'm just going to use the file and I'm going to hit all of the inside, all of the edges that are no longer visible. Actually, I'm going to grab, that one might be a little too fine. It's just not taking off much. 
I'm going to grab one that is basically the same thing, just a little bit coarser. This one, you'll hear the difference between, between that and this one's fine. This one's a little coarser. Okay, that's what you need to make a short about, is like you make a song with your different <laughs> Luke and I have talked about doing that. And I'm, I'm not doing anything up here. I'm just doing down at the bottom because that's where it's rubbing. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit all of these because earlier it wasn't binding over here and it was binding over here, but it might be binding over here now that I'm down a little farther. So sometimes you'll leave one area away and that's the culprit later on, but not the culprit at the beginning. They keep yelling at me because I'm not telling you that they're saying center pin. No, the center pin is the one that it may look like that, but it's, it's not. That, that one, it's, it's moving. You can, you can look at it and see where it's moving, and that center pin, it's, um, it's not rocking on that pin. So if both of the two sides were moving and the middle wasn't moving, that would tell you it was a center pin. But in this case, one side is moving up and down, and the other side is jamming. Um, and so that means we know it's on the side, it's not in the middle. Yeah, there we go. Now it's moving. Yeah, it's pleasing. That is pleasing right there. That's what I'm looking for. And then if I really want to, I can come in with the hand plane. And for some reason, joints just look so much better with one pass right across it. And so what I can do is slide these down so that the board is supported by the bench top. And then I'll take the plane and go against the grain, of course. I was like, oh, that sounded awful. <laughs> Dial it back a little bit and take a slightly thinner shaving. But what this will do is it will hit the end grain and the face grain. And I'll get a really nice clean surface on there. And so now we've got something that's out of focus again. There you go. So there's the pin side and there's the tail side. Which you actually can't see quite well because the coloring is different. Let's see if I can get a good color balance on here. There, that looks about right. So we've got houndstooth dovetails. Beautiful. One of those things that um, it, it looks complicated. But once you break it down into the individual steps, it actually comes out pretty well. And uh, it's one of those things that looks good. It has no real practical functional difference. Man, it looks good. And it's relatively simple. So what questions we got? Or if I answered them all ahead of time. You answered them, but I realized I forgot to put time markings on this question. Uh, but I can go back and see when the question was asked. But Alex, uh, Alex Adams says that your song that you should make with the files is Carol of the Bells. Ooh, that would make a good Christmas one. Now, Luke and I were talking about doing a, um, a song video at one time. We actually recorded a whole bunch of sounds around the shop. Um, and we were going to do a collab with a video uh, a channel that does things like that. Um, but then he backed out of it, and so we... Um, dropped the file, but uh, that would be a fun one to do sometime. Just do all the, the shop sounds and turn them into a song. <laughs> cool. Um, well, if we don't have any questions, we can uh, go ahead and wrap it up. Um, and wrap this one. What is today? Today's the 25th, so the next one is going to be next month. So, yeah, I don't know what the next one is yet. I don't have a one on one um, lined up, but I'm wanting to get one of those in. So, if someone has something they want to see, let me know. Um, I am planning on doing a few more joints. It's been a little while since I've done them. Um, and since people are asking about uh, doing a half blind, um, I might end up doing a video of doing a half blind and then a full blind, um, a mitered full blind, which those are kind of fun. Uh, but that one may end up being two lives in order to actually talk through it. I'm pretty sure I could do a full blind mitered dovetail in a single live, uh, in a, a single hour, but I don't know if I could do it in a single live because talking through things takes a lot longer. Got any last minute questions? Does the audio go out? I hope not. Oh, hey, hang on. Okay, here's a quick question. Clean joint, but any way to fix the small gaps or will the glue take care of that? Um, the, yes, let me show you. 
I don't like filling gaps. I personally like to leave them because uh, it shows the humanity in the piece. And if you go look at any dovetails I have around the, shop, around the house, they all have little gaps, and I like it that way. Um, it's just personal preference. But if you want to fill it, the best way to do it is actually to grab the scrap pieces you have left over on the bench from um, working out. So I've got these pieces here. And what I'm going to do is grab a chisel, and I'm going to put it right down here on the edge. Let me see if I can get over to this side and show you. I'm going to put it right down here on the edge where I put um, it against the your dog. camera. Oh, thank you. Am I focused? Yeah. There we go. I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to pare this down into a wedge. And I've got a really fine wedge there. See that slid underneath there? So that lets me know that's fine there. And then I'm going to find where I want to fit it in. Like this spot here, I've got a little bit of a gap right there. So I'm going to take this wedge, and I'm going to chop it down into something a little smaller, like this. Got that little piece there. I'm going to fit it into that gap. With that wedge in there, now I can tap it down in. I'm going to use a better mallet for it. Let me grab my chasing hammer. Quick, grab it. It's running away. And I can just tap that down in. Break it off. And what that does is this is the same material as this wood, and so it's going to have the exact same grain structure and the exact same color. And then I can come through and plane it off, and I'll have a perfectly matched um, grain transition in there. Um, and that is so, so much better than a glue fill. And what that will do is just become absolutely invisible. And so if you're going to be filling gaps, that's the way to do it. Um, glue... Glue always looks like someone filled the gap with glue. Um, and I know people absolutely swear by the sand dust, the sanding dust and debuffing it. I have never seen it look good. Um, I've never seen it look uh, like something other than a filled gap. It always looks like you're trying to hide it. And I don't like making things where it looks like I'm trying to hide it. I'd rather either disappear or just leave it there to show I'm human. Um, but personal preference. Um, yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of, of filling with glue. I've never seen that done well. Um, it's always, it always kind of stands out. So there you go. <laughs> Anything left? Cool. I think that'll do it for now. So if you see something um, you'd like me to do in the future, let me know. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.